When Scythene had accepted her dear friend, Ishikawa's invitation for some human recreation, she'd really jumped at his offer. How couldn't she? Everybody needed a hobby to enjoy, and for her, exposing other species' cultures was her guilty pleasure. It was just so interesting. Not that she'd gush about it out loud, though. She had a reputation as a Federation captain to protect, but seeing as she was off the clock, a little indulgence now and then never hurt anyone. And it's not like anything could go wrong. The reputation humans had for being thrill-seeking lunatics must have been blown out of proportion, right? Just because they're a little unhinged when it comes to everything else doesn't mean they can't enjoy their off time doing something peaceful. Or so she hoped. As they pulled up to their destination, a feeling of trepidation crept up her back as she noted that they'd arrived at an airport. How strange. She reached over and tapped her friend on the shoulder. F friend Ishikawa, why are we here? Oh, you know, we're just here for a flight. We get on, we get off, and enjoy the view, he said with a smile, as far as she had seen on other humans when they were up to no good. Pushing away the ever-approaching feeling of foreboding, she opted to believe that they were only going to take a short flight to a nice scenic destination. Oh, okay, sounds interesting. That's the spirit. Having found a spot, it should cow up the car. Now let's go. Time waits for no one. Scythene's sweat dropped. She tugged at the harness. Tunning a few straps as she waited for Ishikawa to finish putting his own harness on. Finding nothing else to do while waiting, she pondered as to why she had to wear a harness for a quick flight, and why she had to sign a concerning amount of paperwork. Something's not adding up here. Before she could have any second thoughts, a pat on her shoulder pulled her out of her own thoughts. Turning around, she saw Ishikawa in his own harness, a weird-looking backpack in his hands. Ishikawa looked her up and down. Looking good. Looks like you know how to put on a harness. I'm your superior and a federation captain. Of course I know how to put on a harness, she said, scoffing. I don't command a trillion credit vessel for nothing, you know. That's right, you sign my paychecks, he said, with a click of the tongue. How about me? Harness looking good? After giving Ishikawa a quick once over, she gave him an approving nod. So, friend Ishikawa, why are we wearing harnesses for a flight like this? And what's in that bag you have? The harnesses are for our safety, and this... He gave the bag a wiggle before leaning closer and whispering conspiratorially. This is a surprise tool that'll help us later. So I think he squinted at him, trying to find any sign of deception on his face. After finding none, she let out a deep sigh. She really had the view he promised would be worth it. Oh, but what if it wasn't? And this whole thing was a disappointment, but she didn't want to be disrespect- Hello, you done thinking? He said, waving a hand over her eyes. Ishikawa to Scythene, please respond. Huh? Oh, right, we should get going, she said, as she walked away, still in a bit of a daze. That's my line. He pointed in the complete opposite direction of where she was going. And the hangar's over there. She flushed a deep lilac. Uh, oh, lead the way. As Scythene entered the plane, a barrage of questions flooded her mind, such as, why was there a concerning lack of seats? Why were there people outside checking our harnesses? Was this really just a normal flight? What was in Ishikawa's bag? Why were the only ones here? She shook her head, pulling away the intruding thoughts, choking up to human encentricity, as she sat in front of her sitting Ishikawa. Are you having second thoughts? He asked. We can get off now if you like. No, it's just that all of this seems... off, she replied hesitantly. I trust you, though. Wrong answer, he mumbled under a cough. Huh? What was that? I said, take this and scooch a bit closer so I can hook you up. He waved a pair of goggles and some earplugs in front of him. It's for your... uh... safety. After taking the things he offered, she moved to sit closer to him, putting on the goggles and earplugs as Ishikawa fiddled with the buckles in his harness as he lashed it to himself. Just as they finished their preparations, they felt the plane rumble beneath them, as the droning of the engines filled the cabin. Ah, looks like we're finally getting out of here. Ishikawa clapped his hands and rubbed them together with glee. Can't wait. She eyed Ishikawa with suspicion, bracing herself as she felt the aircraft lurch upwards as it took off. I sure hope I don't regret this. She was definitely regretting this. So I think really didn't know what was going to happen, but her fight or fight instincts were on full tilt. Her brain working overtime, trying to figure out what was going on. The lack of seats? Ishikawa being far too excited for a flight? The harnesses? I swear I saw something about relapse of liability on one of those waivers. Things just weren't adding up and she really wasn't liking it. She tapped Ishikawa's leg, getting his attention. F friend Ishikawa? Hmm? When do we get off? She asked, feeling a bit angsty to touch solid ground. Soon. A wave of relief washed over her. Oh good, how soon? A loud ding cut through the droning of the engines, a green light popping up on the opposite end of the cabin. 
Before she could question what was happening, the door beside her opened, a strong gust of wind crashing into them. That soon. Her skin cycled through the rainbow's colours as she panicked. Close the door! Huh? What do you say? He asked, inching his way over to the open door, quickly finding himself sitting on the edge. Couldn't quite catch that. Ishikawa, stop moving, she squealed, covering her eyes with her tentacles as she thrashed in her harness. I want to get off the plane, please. Get off the plane? That can be arranged. Just look at me for a second. Reluctantly doing so, she opened her eyes to him, looking back at her with a maniacal smile. Better keep your eyes open. You really wouldn't want to miss this. Wow. She couldn't even finish her sentence before Ishikawa flung himself, and consequently her, out of the plane. So I think could only open her mouth in a silent scream, as her brain completely blanked, having been overwhelmed by the sensation. The last thing she heard before passing out was the joyful whoop of her friend. The muted sounds of rushing wind was the first thing she could register. Her mind still fuzzy as it rebooted itself. That was a weird dream. Prying her eyes open, she was greeted with the sight of the ground slowly inching its way towards her. She stared ahead blankly before she realised what was happening. Not a dream! Not a dream! Hey, Captain. Nice of you to finally join me, Ishikawa said from behind her. How did you enjoy your catnap? We're going to die! Oh my god, we're going to die! Her skin started to cycle through all the colours of the rainbow she freaked out. Not like this! Not like this! We're not going to die. Calm down and enjoy the ride, he said calmly, as if we weren't hurling towards the ground. In a way, he was right. The view was amazing. The azure hue of the sky, complementing the various shades of green beneath them, combined with the serene feeling of the wind rushing past her. Oh wait, she was falling. Fast. Back to screaming, I guess. Ah! The ground was getting closer and closer, so I think now able to pick out individual buildings in the distance. This is it. This is how I die. Ishikawa chuckled at her panic. Hey, at least it'll be quick, right? You, you demon! She screamed, flinging her harness. You no good heathen, I'll have your head! Whoa, calm down. Quit squirming or we're actually going to die. She slammed her eyes closed and made a silent prayer to her deities as the ground sped ever closer to her, preparing for the inevitable. That was until she felt herself get violently jerked backwards, the sound of wind disappearing in an instant. So this is it. I died. Maybe I'll finally meet my brood mother in heaven. So long, world. A distant voice called out to her. Hey, are you okay? Wake up. Is that Ishikawa? This isn't heaven, it's hell. What sense did I commit to deserve this cruel and unusual punishment? I can hear you mumbling. It's not hell and you're not dead. Open your eyes. That's strange. Even in death, Ishikawa finds a way to haunt me. Oh, you little. Feeling herself get shaken, she snapped her eyes open. Instead of the fire and brimstone she was expecting, she was met with a lush landscape as far as the eye could see, the blue sky sitting on top of it. Hearing the fluttering of material, she looked up to see a colourful spread of cloth billowing above her. Huh. Where did that come from? The secret tool for later, that's where, said a voice behind her. You finally back in the land of the living again? Oh, it was just Ishikawa. Did I say that out loud? You've been mumbling to yourself ever since you thought you died, he confirmed. Ah. Other than you coming back from the dead, how did you enjoy your first time skydiving? The cold glare I think gave him sent a shiver down his back. I am docking your pay for this. Ah oh, man, he sighed to himself. I'll still do it again though. You chaos criminal! Ah, oh, whatever. Just hit me somewhere safer next time. Next time, huh? He asked with a raised eyebrow. Ever heard of... bungee jumping? <laughs>